about that. Well, he just yeah. needed to blow off some stuff. Well, it worked out for him in the end, I guess. I mean, he's now head coach of Texas, <laughs> making yeah. tons of money. Yeah, and it's, it's improbably now an SEC team. Yeah. As, as Texas is. Yeah. So you were mostly, mostly with college football? You, you, you didn't do any pro football? No, I didn't do any professional level. I had a chance, but uh, I just didn't take it. Not to go full time. There was an internship route you could do. and. I was so ready to get out of college that I didn't do it, and I now wish I, I'd always wish I did. It's like a six, you could do like a summer internship with the NFL team. Yeah. And that'd been fun. I'd enjoyed that. So that's but, how you're uh, leading off the podcast, wishing that you weren't a pastor? No, 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 I didn't say that now. That was, this was many years before I ever was called to be a pastor. The Lord called me to be a water boy. <laughs> oh. <many> years. <laughs> Oh, boy. If you're just joining us, this is Pat Patrick Sawyer. He's our missional living pastor here at Valleydale Church. Gave the message yesterday, and we're just having a really good time uh, <laughs> talking talking shop here. So you led off the message with, um, with a, an anecdote about Nick Saban. Yeah. And you said that it pained you because you're such an Auburn fan. Yeah. Are yeah. you born and bred in Alabama? I am. I've only lived out of this state two years of my life. Oh, wow. That was when I went to Kentucky for grad school. But you, you're yeah, a, I'm still in the South. Are you an Auburn grad? I am. Yeah, I, am. I, th I, th I Went I, to Auburn. You know, I was an Alabama fan when I was very young. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, because I, 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 my parents have pictures of me in full Alabama gear. Wow, that yeah. would be so weird for me to see. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I, eventually, as I got older, uh, I think I met my neighbor. Her daughter went to Auburn. I went down for a few games. And she kind of converted me, I guess. Oh, okay. You could say. I mean, you're always converted, you know, around uh, Alabama or Auburn. Uh, but, yeah, so I grew up um, mainly Auburn, Alabama fan when I was young. Then basically probably, you know, I don't know, 10, 11, 12. Not, not real old. Not older. I was still young. I became an Auburn fan and have been an Auburn fan ever and then since. You went, did, and you went to Auburn. Mm -hmm. Went to Auburn. Yeah. yeah. Got into athletic training there and. Then went to grad school at Kentucky. So. Was Auburn good while you were there, the uh, football no, we, team? No, we were terrible. Uh, it okay. was the, it, I was there the year. So you got to understand, my most of my college career uh, was centered around controversy. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was working football when Terry Bowden, the year that he stepped down, four yeah, games left the in the season. Tell the people the quick story behind that. Yeah, so we finished up uh, practice. for We had four games left. We were not doing well. We only won like two games. At this point, um, you can imagine the season, and uh, and so we finished up practice on Thursday. We're playing La Tech at home, and I'm sitting in my apartment watch on a Friday. And uh, my boss calls me and says, "Have you heard the news?" And I was like, "No." And they're like, "Terry Bowden just resigned." And I was like, "What?" So literally, we showed up that Friday to the to the game that in the hotel, and there's no coach. <laughs> That must have been so weird because, yeah, like yeah. people, when people see this stuff, they 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 see it on TV, and it's it, in so many ways it, it doesn't seem real, you know. Oh, but behind yeah. the scenes, like that's got to be terrible when a team shows up and there is no coach. Yeah, it was really interesting. You know, you know, Jimbo Fisher was on that staff. I mean, I'm telling you, I've worked yeah. around some interesting people. Jimbo Fisher was on that staff. I watched Jimbo Fisher beat up a player at halftime. Um, yeah, seriously. To beat up a yeah, player. Yeah, they got in a Can fight. Can you confirm that his name is actually Jimbo? Jimbo That just Fisher. seems not that real is, to me. As far Joey, as I know. That can't, that can't be real. As far as it's I know, that a, is his name. Um, but, uh, we all um, know that that's not Dabo Sweeney's real name either. Like, he's, I don't, these guys, it's like they John adopt. They had John James John Fisher. John James. Thank okay, you. Jimbo. Okay, old JJ. Nice. But, I, yeah, so, um, yeah, so then I go to Kentucky. So I leave Auburn. I go to Kentucky for two years for grad school. Work with the football team there. First year, we were real. We were pretty good. Went to a bowl game. It was Hal Mummy's last year, and then or yeah, his second to last year. Then we get into the last year, his my final year there, and we weren't that good. We went we went from a bowl game to like only like again winning well, two games. It's fairly normal for Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and. Uh, Anyway, so there's a lot of controversy at the end of the season. Or, you know, going so into I'm this, seeing into the season. a pattern. Do you yeah. see how controversy Trust follows me. him Trust wherever me. he I, goes? I, I, literally, you know, I literally believed that for a while because, you know, his mommy got fired at the end of that year, and then where did I end up going? I ended up going to Hoover at one point, and right after I left Hoover's when all that controversy and they fired Russ Probst. <laughs> wow. Or maybe it's just that all football just has controversy. Well, that brings no, us, that no, no, brings no, us no. then to the controversy you started yesterday. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of controversy. There was no controversy. No, there was not. Other, other than, other than, I will have to give it you calls a little bit when you think when you sang the third stanza. So that was pretty. That was, that was pretty bold. That was for you. That was pretty bold. You realize well, that was. For oh, I know. Well, so. I thought you. I thought you mentioned it in the pre meeting, and I was like, I think he said what I think he said, yeah. but I wasn't for sure. And then when you said it, I was yeah. laughing at the. I was like, third stanza. I love it. So you came to me. This is now. A couple of years ago, and you said, "Hey, I've got this great idea. I'm going to start a Christian rock band." Or is it a Christian rock, or is it like a vocal band? What uh, are you thinking of? Yeah, I was probably thinking Christian rock. Christian rock. I'm going to yeah. start a Christian hard rock, maybe even Christian metal. Who knows? Let's yeah. get crazy here. And what did you want to call it? Third stanza. Third stanza. Yeah. How, is there anything more rebellious than that in the Baptist church? Right? I don't think so. I don't know if you've been allowed to come to any events. What do you hear? What do you hear when you open the old Baptist hymnal? I don't care what color the cover is. Everyone wants to tell me, oh, the white one's best, but we had the navy one. But the, a lot of them came in multiple colorways. Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. so yeah. stop with this. But it doesn't matter which one you're singing out of. What do you normally do? Well, the minister of music with his tie perfectly dimpled gets up and says, verses one, two, and four. And yeah. then he, and he goes into three. this. Never three. Why do they skip over three? Well, I'll tell you one of the reasons why they skip over three. A lot of times, not every verse is great of these hymns. Everyone's like, oh, hymns. we got to go yeah. there for the rich theology. Well, I should have I put together a list. There's lots of verse. Some of them are just plain unsingable. Yeah. It's got to be real with this. Yeah. Um, but more often than not, it's probably because they're, um, they're, they're just watching out for time. Yeah. Right? yeah. Why do you, what, what's your theory about why they skipped the third verse? You know, I don't know. Third uh, stanza. You know, I don't really know because, you know, in the, in the Baptist world, everything is in threes. Three Ooh, points. Wow. You know? Um, Trinitarian. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, yeah. I Father, mean, everything. Son, and Holy Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew you'd yeah, like that. Yeah. It is you know, everything's three. in threes, and yeah. so why would you not do one, two, and three? But I don't know. I don't know the theory behind that. Maybe it was a. Maybe it was the the person who, you know, in, not it wrote every song, obviously, but I don't know. Maybe the person who put it all together said, we will no longer sing third stanzas. Well, I, don't I'll know. I, I can, really don't know. I, if you'll question. permit me, I can give you a little bit of hymnology right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. I'd love it. Um, some little known facts about hymns. Most of the hymns that you see in a hymnal, um, that it, it, the hymnal does not contain all the verses that were written for that mm. hymn. Oh, nice. I would say the majority of the hymns that you see have many, many verses. And actually, the editors, and it's usually an editorial team of people that make up the hymnal, oftentimes they'll even combine verses, combine stanzas that they like and, and fit them together, and then new synthesized verses are created. Of course, they're allowed to do this. These things are in the public domain. Uh. They're just trying to serve the people of the church by giving them the, the best, um, you know, the, 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 the best songs with the best music, with the best lyrics, cool. and they're trying to tail, and you could see even in different hymnals, like they'll be often tailored to, to have different sections that deal with different parts of the life of Christ, or praise, or just, just different liturgical elements that are, oh, um, awesome. that are there. So yeah, they, a lot that's of times awesome. people are like, just sing verse one, two, and four, and I'm like, well, if you look that one up online, it actually has 11 verses. Hmm. So like, for you, it's verse one, two, and four, but actually if you open the Presbyterian hymnal, they might have six verses, and they might not even be the same, that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So I, I, I like to bring those things up when people are just like, I want to sing it as it was originally written. I was like, well, if you want to do that, you're going to be here for a while. Yeah, you're because, have, yeah. you know, the uh, wondrous cro or when I survey the wonderful cross has several more verses. Oh, just nice. as I am has like 11 verses. Oh, wow. I don't know. That's interesting. I'm, ma I'm making some of that up, but I know that it's, oh, that's know that it's out there. So I gave you, a, you gave me a football lesson. I gave you a hymnology lesson. There we lesson. go. That's awesome. So it pains you to start with old uh, Saban there at the beginning. Do you want to give us your, any of your Saban hot takes for, for what's, what's happening? What's happened in the past or what you think is going to happen in the future? Uh, with him? Or yes. With, well, oh, with, with I, just, I just want to hear your reaction. You, you're, you've yeah. lived a football life. They're well, going to make the documentary soon. I'll say this, uh, you know, when it comes to Saban, is the only thing I don't like about him was that he had the red uniform or the red color. So uh, you just really respect but everything But I like you him. Do. I think he's a great, I mean, if you learn, if I've read that one, that book I mentioned yesterday um, was really good. Um, yeah. There's, I think there's another, there's a couple of books out there. But uh, but I, everything I've read and heard, you know, stories about him, I mean, he's very, very good at what he does. He's he's a very respectful to his players, uh, hard on the coaches, but he's very respectful. 
Uh, but everything I hear about him is great. Obviously, you see what he put together at Alabama. Yeah, it's I mean, difficult you can't, to argue with you success. can't argue his his resume. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would take him over anybody just because I think he knows how to build and sustain a program. Well, so. in his ten, you were talking about all the scandal and whatnot. His his tenure at Bama was relatively scandal free. Like, yeah, he was just absolutely. He was there. He didn't show up drunk. You know, he stayed faithful to Miss Terry, and he was yeah. just getting. He just won a whole lot of football games. Yeah, yeah. And he uh, had a. You know, my buddy is the the foot, the head athletic trainer at Alabama. Like he, he was my. Oh wow. He was the assistant at Kentucky when I was there. So him and I know each other really well. And. He would share some stories. He really, really liked. He worked with. He's been Saban with Saban the whole time he's been in Alabama. Did he ever get to sit down and share an oatmeal cream pie with the man? You know, I don't know. Probably. I don't, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't. I, I didn't get a chance that, to ask him that. I want to put that on my bucket list. And and uh, Jared can put this in the thumbnail of us just holding oatmeal cream pies uh, with Saban behind us. Just chowing down. Well, you, you don't know. think that'll fly? No, I got it. He's got well, it. You know, I, Actually, have Saban holding a hymnal. That'll even be better. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I love the cream pie. I mean, that's one of my favorite Oh, how can you not? Well. They're yeah. so good. And so when they were, apparently when the, I heard that they were dropping them off at this statue, I literally almost drove down there and got them all. Oh, I just because to. they're just putting them Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I was what, like, my gosh, they're up. just going to waste. Um, I mean, of course, well, Saban not, may Not that they can ever expire, let's be real. Um, that uh, the the white the injury. white stuff uh, I've read it's it's ninety percent styrofoam. Yeah, it's is good. A, is a is a fact that I just made up right now. It's it's really good. Just though. made up right in front of you guys. Genesis twelve yeah. is where you were preaching from yesterday. Yeah. The Abrahamic covenant. I don't think you didn't say the phrase Abrahamic covenant though. Did I not I say it at all? I don't think I can't you did. If I did, did, or he, not. did he say? I, I probably can't didn't. I, I kept I did, waiting I to hear that, but it's okay. I you, thought I said that he made a covenant, but maybe not. I now, I can tell that Pastor Mac has discipled you too well. You want to know how I know? How, Joanna that? knows what I'm about to say. Because you're like, today we're in Genesis 12. I went to a bunch of verses. So I got open there. up to the book of Matthew yeah, when we yeah, started. Yeah. I, almost, I love that. I almost said that. So I almost funny said that to me. I almost said that yesterday. I almost said, hey, I'm going to pull up Pastor Mac on you this morning. <laughs> and we're eventually going to get to the passage. I know. But we've got to get there, and it's going to be a while. You should have. Because uh, tip- if you noticed, I mean, I, I did a long, longer introduction than I'd normally do. Yeah. I'd only do a shorter introduction, but... I wanted to. It, it felt like it made sense where I was going, and I wanted to put that in there. But I did. I did almost mention. Yes, I'm about to pull a Pastor Mac on you today. So I love that you went to Matthew <laughs> and Acts, and then you're like, anyway, now to the text. Now to the text. Yeah, I, we'll, uh, we'll get I'm, there eventually. I'm digging it, man. Hey, more Bible in a message is always welcomed. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I that's think good. that we need. I, I think that we need to pack our services as full of God's word as we can. So I'm not complaining. I just uh, wanted to laugh about that with you. <laughs> Um, so the message is on how this, or your sermon is about how the gospel message is for everyone, and I, yeah. I think it's instru- it is helpful, it is instructive to us that it, it that um, to, to remember that this starts with, I mean, well, you can make great arguments for it starting even beforehand, yeah, the Proto-Evangelium yeah. and the Genesis 3 and all that, but like the way that this relationship between God, and you, and you talk, for, talk us through again a little bit about how like this shows God's intimacy with His people. I thought that was really yeah. Cool. I mean, I you know I, I think you go back. Of course, we I show pulled out some things yesterday about Abraham, but also I mean, if you look through any any of the people that God used, I mean, there was a relationship there. It wasn't just they weren't just puppets. I mean, they were there was relational. God was talking to them. They were spending yeah. time with God, and you see that you know whether that's with Abraham or that's with even his sons, you know. And, and even at David, I mean, you see that, and I know pastors brought this out too, is, you know, David spent a long time in the wilderness before he was ever really called. Yeah. I mean, he was called, but he wasn't, but he spent time and then before the God it really used It was a time him. of preparation. Yeah, absolutely. And so we see that. And, um, you know, and I like that, the quote that I found, you know, that, and it was so powerful. I, I mentioned it yesterday was that God will never use you publicly until he tutors you privately. Man, I meditated on that. You got a testimony for us on that? You know, I, my life. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm being serious. Like, I, you know, um, I, you know, my, I was doing, for many years after Dawn and I got married, I was doing nothing. I mean, Dawn was slowly getting involved here, um, and I was literally coming on Sundays, and that was about it. I wasn't coming Wednesdays. I was doing nothing. You were nothing. just a gamer. Just come I, on I mean, Sunday. I literally was what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, and I did that for many years, uh, and then the Lord just, I think, finally just said, that's enough. 
uh, and really, you know, radically changed. But the way yeah. that he radically changed was that Dawn and I, I can remember it like it was yesterday, we made a commitment. We had never, either one of us had ever read the Bible, you know, straight through, cover to cover. Wow. Never at this point in my whole life. I'd read it, but I didn't have read it the whole thing, you know, in one, sh not, you know, one year or whatever it is. Yeah. So I made the commitment, we made the commitment to do that, and we did it. We both did it, um, and that really put us on a trajectory of where we're at today. I mean, really both of us. I mean, we're, we're, the, we're who we are because of what God did through us through his word. And so when I, when I mean and say that God will radically change your life through spending time with him, his intimacy, I really mean it because I've seen it in my own life. That's a helpful word, especially I would say to young men that are looking to be pastors. Like if you want to have a career in ministry, oftentimes you can get caught up thinking about, oh, I want to be able to do this on stage. I want to be able to have this kind of influence yeah. on people. And... Um, that's a scare, because sometimes God will do that, um, he'll, and he'll discipline you by giving you um, influence over people without having that work done on your heart, and that's yeah. a dangerous place to be. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, worth, spend, it's worth spending the time uh, with him privately so that he can work through you publicly. And, you know, I, I, there's a similar, um, I talked to, I talk to our, our music teams some about this, how, like, the way that God will honor our preparation Mm -hmm. our, our services are, are very tightly planned, but, but usually something will happen early Sunday morning as we're putting things together. Yeah. Something new will come up, and the Lord will honor our preparation by yeah. having things fit together. And it's because awesome. we've, you know, it's, we, we haven't had a thousand people in front of us. It's just been our small team there. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, so I, I, that one really grabbed me. I wrote it down. Yeah. Um, I, I want to think about that even more. Oh, yeah. The intimacy Trust with me. God and what that means. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. What, what else can we talk about uh, with this message? You know, I, I like to use this time to, yeah. um, to, to, I guess, if there's anything you had to leave on the cutting room floor. That was a tight message yesterday. You know, you only did 35 minutes, yeah. even though Pastor usually does 65 or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it, you know, I would say if I could could add anything more to it, it, it wouldn't be bringing any new insights. I would just say what I really wanted to say, and, and hopefully I did a, a cl clear enough, I'd say, with the time I had, of really just helping everybody understand the importance. One is that the Great Commission is a command. It's not a suggestion. It is a command. It, you know, Jesus didn't tell us, you know, hey, when you got nothing better to do, please do this, or hey, if you have time. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Right. Uh, you know, but, but it's a command that we must follow and obey, and it really was his last words before he went to be with the Father is the Great Commission. And, you know, so understanding that, but then also understanding that, that we all do play a part no matter our lifestyle. I mean, that's the biggest thing I wanted to get across was no one has an excuse. Hmm. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, but but you also don't want to create another excuse, which is what I'm always afraid of. Is I don't want people that are they're they're being called to go that are able to go uh, that are sitting back going, well, I'm serving here, I'm doing this, so I don't have to go anymore. But that's not an excuse either, you mm -hmm. know. And it's it's I've heard a pastor say this, and it kind of makes sense. I understand it. Of like, we should all just believe that God's calling us to go unless He tells us otherwise. That's probably a pretty good. Uh, you know, well, that's why thing to way to think, I guess. So um, you get, you did that video with Jared that started your message, yeah. and I thought that was a great place to start. The pray, give, go, and Jared's yeah. even got another version of that that we're going to see later this week. Um, just such helpful words. You know, I saw Miss Robin was in there talking about how her health has limited yeah. her, but she can be a prayer warrior. And yeah. then John talking about, well, yeah, our schedule has really limited us, but we're thrilled to be able to give. Yeah. You know, and then. Uh, Rob Compton talking about how he lives in Nepal now. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like the, it's like this. So this is another story that just came up even yesterday afternoon. Is we have one of our partners who are, who's coming into town, and he has got a he's got a gluten. Uh, I guess he he's got a gluten diet. You know, he has a whatever you call it. He can't is it eat celiac gluten. He has, yeah, I don't know if he has celiac for say for sure. I wouldn't say that. But he has an intolerance. He cannot eat it. He has to eat a certain type of bread, and that's not easy to find. Um, and it, the word overseas, you mean? Or well, no, no. He's 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 in Las Vegas. He's oh, our partner okay. in Las Vegas, uh, and he probably can find it there. But it's not that easy to find anywhere. You can't just 
walk into any grocery store and find it. It's kind of hard. It's a rare kind of bread. And But we had a lady in our church, and I, I won't mention her name because I haven't asked her, but we have a lady in this church who can't do a whole lot of things she's going through right now. But when she found out that, she said, you know, this is something I can do. And she baked him special bread just for him while he's here. Oh, that's great. That he can eat. And and you think that's something that's just, well, all she did was cook food. No, that's But huge. imagine what that, that is using her gift that, in her, in what God has given her in her capacity in this life stage. It doesn't mean that this is something that she could have done differently a month ago, two months ago, or even what we'll see in her life a few months from now. But right in this moment where she's at, you know, that was what she can do. And I think that's a powerful yeah. message that I hear those all the time. I wish we could just get up there on Sundays, which, you know, I know we can't, and just tell these stories. We try to find ways to incorporate those stories. <clears throat> Uh, but there's so many, and you just have to decipher through what is so good and what we need to share. Because there is so many stories that I hear like that, where people are using their gifts in different ways that can be directly in some way connect to the big picture of missions. Yeah, that's a story you need to keep in your back pocket. Yeah. I really, I really like to hear that. People, you know, it's so often people will say something like. Well, if there's anything I can do, just let me know. Yeah. Well, do you actually let them know? Yeah, usually, yeah. Well, you, usually you don't. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, usually yeah, you're, you yeah. get in the thick of it and you're like, I can't even remember who told me that. Yeah. But if someone, like, they, sees it, they see a need and then they simply take initiative, yeah. how much of a blessing Absolutely. that can be. It doesn't have to be like get on a plane and go to Nepal, although sometimes it should be. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but a, a lot more times it's something more simple. And then also how many times where we're praying a prayer and the Lord is, like, shouting at us, you are the answer to that prayer. Yes, yes. Why are you waiting for somebody else to do that? You need to yes. do it. Well, that reminds me you know, of Luke 10 when Jesus tells them before he sends them out to pray that God would send out laborers in the harvest. Yeah. Who was, getting, who was God getting ready to yeah, send out? all those people. Them, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> so, so be careful yeah. when you ask God, when you pray of those things, because God may be calling you to answer your own prayer. I love that passage. We actually read Matthew's version, a little bit of that oh, yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, really, really important stuff. Well, that's all the time we got today. You're going to see a lot of Patrick over the, the rest of this this week. You know, this is like your Super Bowl. You know? It is. It is. So, so uh, Wednesday. This is all those training of athletic trainings for many years. So all that training is comes into this Just week. keep coaching us up. I love it. So when, when you preach, like, I love how the coach in you just comes out, you know. Um, just telling people what's up, you yeah. know, and they better know it. Even when we get to the response time, you're like, okay. Stand up, we're going to respond. You know, things <laughs> yeah. like that. I'm like, yeah. okay, Patrick, yeah. yes, sir. Yes, I sir. left here yesterday, and I was like, I don't think I did that response to <laughs> <laughs> Just, no, it was no. It, it's you got, but you got my attention. I'm like, all right, I walked yes, out, sir. I was like, I, I, yeah, I just don't think I confused everybody on that. One. I confused myself. No, <laughs> you confused that. Well, I tell you what. I, I'm like, am I in prayer at this point? I, or am I not? <laughs> I don't think don't I told them I'm in talking prayer. To God or talking but I'm to praying. Them. But I don't think they know I'm praying. So how am I gonna it's connect okay. this back? <laughs> it's all right. Pastor does that too sometimes. <laughs> Hey, I, the whole the whole service is a conversation with yeah. the Lord, so yeah. I, I don't think we need to be so hard and fast yeah. about that. And it was start, a great day. If you start tongue day. speaking, we might have to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was, um, but it was but a great day. The Music people, was awesome yeah, the too. people. Oh, thanks, brother. Oh. Well, the, Open the door with the third stanza. Yeah, the third I mean, stanza. You know, who knows? Are we even Baptists anymore? We've lost our identity <laughs> with the third stanza. So the people weren't confused though in the response because a lot of people came and prayed, yeah. which is really moving to me. I was really just grateful to be up there and pray with them. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, so. Um, Pastor's going to be back in the pulpit next week. He's he's doing a, a one mission message, but it mm -hmm. is going to come from Ephesians. You guys keep praying for Pastor, as he yes. saw, as he said on social media. Had a minor back surgery this past week. He's doing awesome. He even slipped in for the second service for a yep. minute yesterday. Um, you know, I went over to clap him on the back, but Miss Debbie, you know, pushed <laughs> me out of the way. He's uh, so he is preaching this coming yep. Sunday, and and uh, just keep praying for him to make yep. a very swift recovery. Absolutely. And then pray for the missionaries as they're coming in, and yeah. we're going to see them soon. You've got a cool lunch at uh, that, that at today's Monday. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say on Monday. So you got a cool lunch today. Yeah. Men's and women's lunch luncheon on Friday. You yep. can RSVP for that. Anything else you want to say? Absolutely. I mean, just be here as much as you can. I mean, yeah. you're going to get to hear some great stories of God doing things all over the world, and it's awesome to hear. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Say goodbye, Patrick. Thank you. See you. Thank you.